I'll be going over many of the team sets from the classic Opeachy hockey years of the 70s and 80s. My eBay username is FDGames1, and the set you see in front of you here is one of the many listed on the site. Okay, there it is right there. Uh, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and let me know about some of your favorite teams as well. So here's a beauty, as Don Cherry would say, the 1984-85 Opeachy Edmonton Oilers. Hockey cards always came out the following season, so this is the group that won their first Stanley Cup. I don't want to rattle off too many stats, but you have to make an exception here. They finished with a team record, 57 wins in a regular season, scoring a ridiculous 446 goals. They were so dangerous, they scored 36 goals, shorthanded. I know today's hockey isn't the same, but to give you some idea, the Flames led the way last year with 18. They had not one, but six Hall of Famers. Okay, so moving on, as with all my sets, the cards are in fantastic condition. Never a crease anywhere. The 84-85 set in general is so popular because it's loaded with rookies. Uh, tons of rookie cards. We're going to see some of them in future videos. Stars like Cam Neely, Chris Chelios, Doug Gilmore, Pat LaFontaine, and of course this guy, the great Stevie Eiserman. Uh, they're well designed with a close-up pick in the bottom right. And these are the purple backs with the hockey stick in the background. Okay, so let's get into it. Right on the top, probably the greatest player to ever hit the ice, Mr. Wayne Gretzky. Uh, look at these insane stats on the back. When I was doing hockey pools with my buddies in the 80s, you couldn't just take Gretzky as a pick. You had to take either his assists or his goals. They were two separate picks. Like 92 goals, 87. Ridiculous. Who's going to beat that? This team set finishes off with one more Gretzky. Glenn Anderson. He always seemed to get the clutch goals. He had a ton of speed and would fly down the wing straight to the net, annoying the crap out of goalies like this guy. Billy Smith and Anderson in front of the net was like watching one of those lumberjack competitions. Another fantastic skater, Paul Coffey. He has so many NHL records for defensemen. Such an efficient skater. He could get up there and basically play as a fourth forward, joining in on the attack. Along with the three cups at Empton, he won another with the Penguins in 91. Lee Fogelin. This pick must be a bit earlier, as Gretzky was team captain by then. But Fogelin was the captain for a few years in the early 80s. Coffee gives Fogelin a lot of credit for showing him the ropes, as they sat next to each other in the dressing room during those years. Fulgun was the first U.S.-born player to be picked in the first round of an NHL draft. Another cool 80s OPG action shot here, Oilers legend Grant Fuhrer. Now, in my first video, I talked about Canucks GM Jim Benning being drafted by the Leafs. Well, they could have had this guy, as he went two picks later. Amazing how many times the Oilers nailed their draft picks in the 80s. This team was scoring so many goals, Fuhrer got 13 points himself in the 83 season. <laughs> Yeah, he could let in a lot of goals, but when you needed the clutch save with the game on the line, he was the man. Plus, he was fun to watch as he'd make even the most routine save always look like this. Watch the 1987 Canada Cup. Every game was 6-5 and he still looked spectacular. The doctor in the house, Randy Gregg. He wasn't even drafted, and really hockey was just a fun thing on the side for him. As he earned his medical degree... But he ended up being pretty good. He's one of the other players that were part of all five Stanley Cup winning teams. He was so solid during this season that he was selected for the 1984 Canada Cup team. Up next we got Charlie Huddy. The NHL used to have a plus minus award and Huddy won it in 82-83 with a plus 64 ranking. He was usually paired up with Paul Coffey. He'd let Paul take off and do his thing while Huddy covered for him defensively. And he's got another great 80s stash there. Pat Hughes. He actually won a cup with the Habs in the late 70s before winning a cup with the Oilers. He set an NHL record for fastest two shorthanded goals, and that was a big deal because it was the first time anyone had broken a record held by Wayne Gretzky. After hockey, he spent about 20 years working for the police force in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Pretty cool. Dave Hunter. 
another fixture on the Oilers who played in Edmonton for a decade. Like any Hunter brother, Dave could play it mean and tough. But uh, if you look at his penalty minutes, he didn't take a ton, so he played it smart. He was actually drafted by the Habs in 78, but was one of the players that bolted to the WHL when he joined Edmonton. Don Jackson. He was paired up most of the time with Randy Gregg, and he was a purely defensive defenseman. He turned to coaching when he retired, and in 95 he was coaching the Cincinnati Cyclones of the old IHL. The Atlanta mascot, who was called Sir Slapshot, was really annoying in one game. So he climbed the glass and started beating on the mascot. It was on all the ESPN highlight shows for a few days. He got a 10-game suspension for that. See, that uh, just doesn't happen in today's hockey. Mike Krushelniski. Uh, he's wearing the Bruins jersey there, but he came over in a trade for the rat Kenny Linsman. As it says there, and now with Oilers. For a guy who was one of the last picks in the 1979 draft, he had a nice long career in the NHL. Actually, Gretzky thought so highly of him that he demanded that he was part of the big trade that sent Wayne, Mike, and Marty McSorley to the Kings. Next up, the great Yari Curry. What a career. 601 NHL goals. Every team figured he was staying in Finland and passes on Curry, so he doesn't get picked until the sixth round. Of course, the Oilers somehow knew he wanted in the NHL. He played most of his years in Edmonton alongside Gretzky, and the rest, as they say, is history. A few weeks after winning the Cup in 1990, he actually left the NHL to play in Italy for a season, as he wanted to be available to play for Finland in the World Championships. He got a $350,000 contract and free housing, which back then was by far the largest contract in European hockey history. Willie Lidstrom. Although he won a couple of Cups with the Oilers, He's probably better known as a Winnipeg Jet, scoring a ton of goals there. This guy lived a charm life. He played in Winnipeg when Hall was there, Edmonton with Gretzky, and finished his NHL career in the mid-80s in Pittsburgh with, yeah, Mary Lemieux. Remember the old AFCO Cup? For the Willie's one of the few people in hockey that can say he won both the AFCO and Stanley Cup. Kevin Lowe, another player with a long, distinguished career at Edmonton. He was actually the very first Edmonton Oiler in the NHL, getting drafted in the first round in 79. He's still the only Oiler player to play over a thousand games with the team. He had great anticipation for where the puck was going. He'd break up so many plays on D and then make a nice pass up to the Fords. Kevin McClellan. You know, most great teams in any sport, they usually have to lose a big one before they know how to win the big ones. And in the 83 finals, the Islanders just crushed the Oilers four straight. Sather figured he had to add some sandpaper and picked up McClellan from the Penguins. He was tough in every way and was great on the checking line, winning four Stanley Cups with Edmonton. Mark Messier, the moose in Edmonton that became the Messiah in, in New York. Another Hall of Fame superstar and one of the NHL's all-time greats. When Messier was 16, he was already, chose, he was already close to 20, 200 pounds and skipped playing major junior or college hockey and went to the WHA instead. He was part of that insane 1979 draft year for the Oilers, where they picked Kevin Lowe, Messier, and Anderson, one after the other. But wait a minute, the next season they drafted Coffey, Curry, and Andy Moog. You can start a debate on which year was better, but both were unreal. He won five cups with the Oilers and another with the Rangers. I thought it was funny that when Messier was battling with Sather and demanding a trade out of Edmonton, he said the Oilers were no longer committed to winning and he wouldn't play on a team that wasn't competing for the Stanley Cup. But then in 97, he signed with the Canucks and played three years there. Uh, moving on, Andy Moog. From, can you guess where? That's a pick of Skaha Lake in Penticton, BC, about an hour away from me here. Moog, of course, backed up Grant Fear and won three Stanley Cups at Empton. He ended up with a nice long career in the NHL. Moog actually has the highest winning percentage of any NHL goalie not in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Yaroslav Hozar. He played most of his career in Europe, but somehow played long enough with the Oilers to still win three Stanley Cups. Like you see, he was born in 52, drafted in 82 by Edmonton in, I believe, the fourth round. I mean, it's not often a player gets drafted as a 30-year-old 
but that's when he was made available in Czechoslovakia. Terry Martin. He's shown here wearing Leafs colors. I talked about him with Toronto in my previous video. He actually only played four games with the Oilers before being sent to the minors and then traded to Minnesota. Actually, in that season with the Leafs, he was eating at a deli in New York and got a serious case of food poisoning and missed three weeks of the season. Yikes. And the last one is the Oilers team card with, of course, Wayne Gretzky. They did a nice job with the team cards in this Opeachy set. They would always have a, a big picture of the goal leader, and on the back, they had scoring leaders and goaltenders. It's amazing that you could have, look at Anderson, a 99-point season and finish fifth in team scoring. It's also interesting that the Oilers didn't miss a beat, no matter which goalie they had in the nets there. Moog and Fear had almost identical stature in the season. Okay, so that's the star-studded 20-card set of 1984-85 Empton Oilers. If you go to the link below, you'll be taken to my eBay site, where you can see these cards, as well as many others uh, from this set, and all through the 70s and 80s. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be notified when the next video comes out. Again, if you have a request to see a video on a particular team, let me know and subscribe to get in on promotions like free shipping and card giveaways. So thank you again for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you again soon.